Hi everybody, welcome back to part three of the uh, Trumpeter 1200 scale Bismarck build. Uh, I'm carrying on with the whole preparation this week and I hope to get it finished. Uh, last week I made quite a lot of progress with altering the plating on the underside uh, and I did a couple of mods to the uh, stem of the ship as well and got this Trumpeter separate part fitted. In this part I'm going to just finish off this underside plating. It's taken a lot of time this week uh, to get that how I want it. Uh, and I'll show you some works that I'm going to be doing on the uh, stem of the ship as well. We have the degaussing cable to fit as well. I have to alter the position of the stem uh, anchor hose pipe as well. It's in the wrong position. It's too far down in the trumpeter kit. So we'll change that. I have a mooring eye to fit as well, which we'll do. And I've just got to alter the shape of the stem because in fitting the trumpeter insert it leads to a step or a kink in the uh, stem that wasn't present so we'll fix that as well. I want to drill through for the pedestal holes and fit the captive nuts uh, and also then finally fit the bracing onto the inside of the hull that will just stiffen everything up and get it ready for the decks. So let's finish off this underside first and then we'll do uh, the rest of the work a bit later on in the video. Okay so you can see that we've got several coats of uh, filler and primer on this underside and it's all starting to blend in uh, but it has taken a lot of work to get it to this stage. Uh, I've probably been working on this for at least three days this week just to get it smooth and really what I'm looking for uh, in this is to get the two sides matched up and you can see when the plating is sanded down that you get the same pattern symmetrically on both sides of the hull and that's what you're looking for. So I'm happy enough with the two steps on the back of the ship or the stern. I've just got a little bit more to do here on this forward plating. And I'm at the stage now where I'm using Mr. Surfacer just to fill in some very fine uh, pitting on the work that I've been doing. And I'm using a flat block just to keep everything nice and flat. On this section here, this curve, you really just got to use your fingers just to feel your way uh, until you get some uh, nice smooth contours there. It's not until you get the primer on really that you realise uh, if you've finished the job. But eventually we'll get to a point where it's just a case of the primer filling in any of the final uh, errors if you like. So this work uh, does take quite a long time. So if you're wanting to do the modification you're going to have to be prepared to uh, do lots of filling, refilling, sanding down, priming uh, until you're happy with it. And there's actually some contention about this plating uh, because first of all it's difficult to see on any photographs or video from the time and secondly every model that's been produced just has a smooth curved underside to it. So I'm still open to the suggestion that this plating didn't exist but as I discovered when I was building the hood you'd think that these uh, ships were very well documented and there'd be absolutely no doubt uh, as to the configurations of them. But that's not always the case. Um, it's a surprise sometimes what uh, source of argument and debate uh, there is uh, in these models. But ultimately you've just got to go with what you're personally happy with. I'm convinced enough that these platings did exist and they are difficult to see on photographs but the one thing that's convinced me that they did exist apart from the drawings that I'm going by in the anatomy of the ship book the thing that confirmed it for me was 
looking at photographs or video of the launch and you can see that there are cables uh, attached to the uh, side of the hull and running down into the dock and you can see how the shadow cast by those cables follows the contour uh, of this shape on the underside. They actually conform to this step uh, on the underside. So just check that out and look a bit more closely uh, at those videos. Look for the cables and look for the shadows cast on the lower part of the hull and you'll be able to see the suggestion of this step on the underside. So with that I'm happy to go with the plans in the Anatomy of the Ship book. If you're not convinced about it yourself for your own build, just omit the modification. I'm not saying that every uh, decent model of the Bismarck's got to have this stuff, it's just uh, I'm convinced enough to represent it. So that's my reasoning. So you've got to be happy uh, with the work that you're doing. Uh, do your own research, make your own mind up about whether or not you want to represent this. Uh, and if not, that's absolutely fine. It's your model, nobody else should tell you uh, what to do. But I wouldn't criticise anyone who uh, elected not to do the same. I think that should work pretty well now under a coat of primer, so we'll see that in a moment. Before we do that, I'm just going to go back and show you the work that I've done on the stem of the ship. So this is the bow insert from the trumpeter kit. You can just see the outline of it here. And you can see the amount of filler that I've had to use to blend that in. So the white filler is milliput. We've got traces of Mr. Surfacer in there as well. Uh, and that's just worked until that's a perfectly smooth transition uh, between the separate parts. You'll also notice that I've got filler up here on a line of the stem of the ship. And that's because, at least on my moulding, there was a sink mark all the way up caused by the thickness of the plastic at this point on the moulding. And if that's not dealt with, you will be able to see that through the final paint finish. So I've worked at that with some milliput to get the depth out of the uh, sink mark and I've also been using some primer and Mr. Surfacer on there as well just to get the final blend and that appears on both sides so I think that again is ready for a little bit of primer just to check that work you can also see here that I've filled in the hose pipe on the uh, stem anchor and that's going to be moved a bit further uh, to the top of the ship. You might be able to see here, I'll just hold a straight edge, that there's a very slight bump here in the separate moulding in the trumpeter kit, which means that there's a kink in the line of the stem. So that needs sanding back. You probably just see it at this point here. So I'm going to straighten that up. The mooring eye goes roughly in this sort of position right on the uh, line of the stem. So we'll fit that. The other contentious aspect of the work that I did last week was this cutout in the bow, which was for uh, an active sonar device called Schallenlager. And I'm sorry to my German friends uh, about my pronunciation of German. But this was an active sonar device and it's not, um, as I said, there's some contention about whether or not that was fitted to the Bismarck. On the launch videos, all you can see is the plating in the shape of this cutout, uh, but it's flush with the rest of the bow. And the author's contention, I think, in the Anatomy of the Ship book is that this was fitted uh, after the first sea trials in the Baltic uh, and when the ship returned to the Blomenvoss shipyard in December 1940. It was in dock for I think about six weeks having final works done and the suggestion was that uh, the plating was removed at that stage and the actual sonar equipment installed. But again 
it is a matter of uh, strong debate. There's lots of people say that it was never fitted. It was fitted to the Tirpitz and not to the Bismarck. Uh, different opinions on the subject. So again, it's an area where you've got to make your own mind up and decide which way you want to go. I'm not saying it has to uh, appear on the model uh, to make it accurate uh, because I guess ultimately no one knows for absolute certain whether or not uh, this was fitted. So I'll leave that up to you. If you want to fit it, it's a fairly uh, easy modification to make. Uh, and I described how to do that last week. So in this area, I just want to sort out this kink in the stem. So I just need to turn the model around. And again, using a flat block with some fairly coarse wet and dry on it. I'm just going to get that nice and straight all the way up. So that's straightened the profile up, uh, but I have put a flat on the front now, so I just need to round that off. This will also have the effect of uh, sharpening the uh, stem up a little bit as well. I'm happy with that. I think that will come up fairly nicely under some primer. We'll see anyway. I've also, during sanding, removed all the rig holes uh, from the port holes here. They'll all be replaced with uh, etch brass rig holes, the replacements. Next I'm going to create the mooring line hook. That's just a slot in the prow. This is very small. Um, it might be difficult to see. I'll get you a close up of it later on. You can see here a very small slot that I've cut in the stem, about halfway up the stem and uh, to that I'm just going to add a very fine piece of stretched sprue just to bridge that slot and that just provides the actual mooring eye uh, on the stem. So just a tiny bit of uh, stretch sprue uh, across the slot that we made and that's uh, created the mooring eye there. Just a nice little detail I think. Next thing to do is to re-drill the anchor hose pipe and that's positioned further up the stem. put this tape on just to protect the vents. I didn't want them getting blocked up with layers of primer. All of these vents are covered with Pontos etch brass parts which I'll fit next week when we come to prepare the hole for painting. One of the difficulties of 
making a video like this is just the size of the uh, hole that I'm working on. It's very difficult to get the shot right. Sometimes we'll be going out of uh, camera shot I'm afraid but it's just so difficult sometimes to uh, get the camera in the right position. Okay so the next step is to fit the uh, degaussing uh, line. I'm assuming it was a cable uh, which went along the hull side just below the water line and you can see the position of it uh, in dock photographs of the underside particularly on the stern. Uh, when the ship was launched the degaussing uh, coil position was a cutout in the stern of the ship and I'm assuming it went all the way along and I think again this is another piece of equipment that was fitted uh, after the first sea trials back at uh, Blom and Voss uh, in winter 1940-41. So I'm just going to be uh, recreating that using some plastic strip. The difficulty with it is to uh, make sure that you get it nice and level. I've just realised actually that I really need to fit the propeller shaft housings here because they're going to need some filler I suspect so I'll glue them now then they'll have time to dry properly before I do any more work actually they're not too bad they will need uh, filler on them but I don't think they're going to take a lot of work to get those sorted out. You'll also notice here on the stern we've got this uh, line which is created by the slide mould. So Trumpeter have inserted this whole section as a slide mould but uh, it hasn't lined up perfectly well so you've got this mould line uh, going across the uh, hull bottom and along the side. So that needs cleaning up as well. It will show under the top coats if we don't get rid of it. We can take these brackets off as well. They'll be replaced with uh, Pontos uh, etched brass parts. There's all the uh, ladder steps up the side. They all come off as well. Doing a hull like this, it's really dirty work. I hate doing it really. The bench is a complete mess. There's uh, water all over the place. Uh, but it obviously needs doing. But uh, once we've done all this dirty work, I'll give the bench a good clean down uh, before we get onto some of the uh, detail work on the model. These little hatches at the side are also replaced. So I'll sand those off flush. These two brackets are for the swinging boom, which I'm also going to be replacing. So on the port side I've fitted the uh, degaussing cable and to do that I've just marked the position here with some tape of the uh, boot topping which is the upper piece of tape here and below that I've added another piece of tape which ends up something like four millimeters uh, below the boot topping and that's given me the line to apply this plastic strip. So this is 0.25 by 0.75 millimeter plastic strip. I've applied that nearly all the way along. I've got the uh, stern to finish because it's slightly peculiar run at the stern and it stops short of the bow here 
uh, by this sort of distance. I've measured uh, these distances all from the drawings in the Anatomy of the Ship book. So it stops short just here on the on the bow. The difficult thing with getting this all nice and straight is to make sure that you get a nice straight boot topping. The way that I apply the boot topping line or the tape for the boot topping is to make some marks. I'll scale that off the drawings, make some marks, probably four or five along the whole side. And then I'll apply the tip into the middle onto a mark on the uh, middle of the hull. And then I'll just eyeball the run of the tape uh, from the front of the ship and the stern as well. So just a really acute angle looking all the way along the hull and just dropping the tape onto the hull in a nice uh, straight line. And hopefully, if you've measured it properly, uh, the tape should meet up with the marks that you've made along the side of the hull. So it's a bit tricky to do that, but it's worth doing it to get a reasonably straight boot topping. But don't get too hung up about them. They weren't really absolutely pristine. So if you look at photographs of these ships during the Second World War, the boot toppings were often applied fairly hastily and it would be difficult to get an absolutely straight line on a one-to-one -one scale uh, situation. So don't worry too much about it, you just get it as close as you can. So I'm going to apply the degaussing coil to the other side now. So this uh, styrene strip isn't too prominent but it will just give that suggestion of the coil and using the edge of the tape I'm just butting the strip up to the edge of the tape and just a small dab of quick drying extra thin cement and that'll just tack it into position And then we just work along the hull. So just enough cement there to hold the styrene down. I don't want to get lots of this glue on because it will go underneath the masking tape and we'll have quite a bit of clean up to do with that happens. Once I've removed the masking tape I can go along and apply some more glue. But uh, this styrene really does st stick well with this type of cement. And being quick setting we don't have to wait too long before we can move on to the next step. Just have a quick check as we're working along. So I'm just working along the hole. Just do a couple of inches at a time. Just using the edge of the tape as a guide. At the stern here, we want to join them together, or well, the two sides, port and starboard. But we want a nice, gentle curve around. 
So I'm just marking out for the pedestals now because I want to drill through and put some captive nuts on the inside of the hull. So I'm just on the centre line here and marking an equal distance from the centre point of the ship. Uh, and I've gone about 20 centimetres, 200 millimetres uh, back from the centre point. So the total distance between the pedestals is uh, 40 centimetres. So that's a nice equalised positioning for the pedestals later on. So I just want to drill these holes out now and then we can turn the hull over and fit the captive nuts on the inside. Okay, I'm going to take the tape off now because uh, this is going to get a coat of primer. Okay, that's good. It's uh, gone on a little bit easier than I thought it would, really. I've uh, rubbed down the filler on the propeller shaft housings. I think they'll uh, be okay. They might need a little bit more work. We'll see after the primer's gone on. A small detail that I want to add are the smoke generators or the exits for the smoke generators which uh, were on the stern of the ship just below the line of the lower set of uh, portholes here and they were equally spaced either side of the centre line If you're going to do these smoke generators just make sure that you know where the center line of the ship is uh, and you can manage to drill those at the same height otherwise they'll look pretty odd. The last job for this week is to fit the pedestal uh, mounts. So the first thing I've done is to drill the hole that the bolt will go through. And I want to anchor a nut on the inside together with a washer as well, just to distribute the load of the uh, nut when it's tightened up. So we'll go inside the hull and I'll just make a frame around the nut so that it's captive uh, and won't go anywhere. It'll be ready to accept the screw when we come to mount the model to the pedestal. So all I want to do here is build a frame out of some styrene. It doesn't have to be too neat or precise, it's not going to be seen. I'm just putting the styrene across the flat of the nut so that'll just stop it rotating. Okay, so basically we've just built a cage around the nut. It's not going to fall out once we remove the screw. So uh, that should hold that all in place. I'll leave that to dry. And then I can remove the bolt and do the forward 
mounting as well. The next thing to do is to just fit the three braces that go uh, side to side on the ship. And that just uh, reinforces the hull and gives something for the deck to sit on uh, when we come to do that next time. At this point the uh, braces are just butt fitted up to the inside of the hull so I'm going to give those a bit more strength by adding some extra strip. Just like that on either side. Okay, that's done I think for this session. I have the bilge keels to fit along the side here. Actually they go underneath those vents. There's a marking on the moulding here where they fit. But I'm not going to do them yet because I want to give this whole assembly uh, a final prime just to check for any more work that needs doing. Uh, if it's all good I'll just rub down this area and fit the bilge keels next time. I'll also do all the brass work on the model at that stage so we've got the brass covers for the vents here to do. We've got the listening device microphone holes to drill out as well. You can see that I've filled the trumpeter mouldings in because they're the incorrect shape. The Pontos template will give us the correct shape for that. I'll also do the uh, rig holes which I've uh, removed the plastic one, so I'll refit the etch brass rig holes next time. There's a couple of hatches to fit. I sanded those off earlier on in the video. And I've got the boom brackets to fit at the front and the propeller guard brackets to fit at the back as well. So a little bit of brass work to do next time. And then hopefully we can uh, get the decks fitted and the hull painted. So I'm going to tidy the bench up a little bit, uh, get ready for the next step. We're in complete chaos at the moment with all this sanding and filling work that I've been doing. Uh, so it needs a good tidy up and then we can move on to the next step in the next video. Okay, so uh, that's the hull all primed. I've just used a plastic primer from an automotive uh, supplier and that sprays on really nice straight from the can and that's shown that all the work that I've done this week and last uh, is fine to go ahead and have this painted now but before I get on to the painting there's still the work that I've got to do with the brass that I've just described and I've also got to permanently fix uh, the deck in place this is just uh, temporarily fitted it's got to be prepared some of the mouldings removed from it uh, ready for further work later on in the build uh, and then we can get it installed. It's a much simpler proposition the deck work uh, than the previous build I did the hood which of course was on uh, two different levels and also had side batteries in it as well whereas this deck is just uh, the same level fore to aft so a much easier build. So I hope that the work that I've done uh, over the last couple of videos has helped out. Uh, I know that quite a few of you are building the model yourself or you've got it in your stash and some of you have also got the Pontos set as well so hopefully following the build through will help you uh, if you're embarking on the project uh, for yourselves. So I'll take this on to the next step in part four uh, coming up next Friday at the same time eight o'clock. So in the meantime, everybody look after yourself, stay safe, and I'll see you in another seven days. Bye for now.